Good morning and God bless. Listen, it's early morning. The Spill with Spillman, Foaming at the Mouth Podcast Network. Listen, there's some serious things happening in the world. If you haven't paid attention to what's going on in the world, there is an attack on strong men and male masculinity. I would ask you if you get a chance to check out um, Israel Mills' channel and uh, the Angry Man's channel. But anyways, I just wanted to say this morning, there is an attack on male masculinity, on the family, on the traditional roles and values. I was watching Andrew Tate on Valuetainment, and I thought they did a great job of interviewing him. This new video was released by Andrew Tate. This is under fair use. Just wanted to give my thoughts and ask your thoughts on this. Y'all have a blessed day. Here goes. So I just wanted to have an informal conversation. I was going to put a suit on and do this formally, but I think it's better if I do this informally. Highlighting some of the things that everybody already knows about how the Matrix operates and what they're trying to do to me and what I believe is going to happen next. It's quite interesting that they are attacking me and attempting to vilify me at the exact same time, whereas real predators, which work for the media establishment, are being ousted. So it's really interesting to do a juxtaposition and do a comparison, right, between how they will treat Philip Schofield, who is confirmed as a groomer, who is admitting he has committed sexual crimes, and how they'll treat me, a man with no convictions and no admission of sexual crimes. Look at the differences in the headlines. Look at how soft they are in their interviews with him. You've had quite the week. How are you? Look at how now, after only two or three days, the headlines are saying we should forgive him and feel sorry for him and let him off. Whereas me, who's been under constant media assault for over a year, they never let up. They never change. Someone sent me a clip yesterday of Philip Schofield saying he's going to kill himself and how sad he is. Last week, if my daughters hadn't been there. Fair use. Then I wouldn't be here. Why do they keep pushing me? Why do they keep pushing me playing the sympathy card? And all the headlines are now like, yeah, we can't keep attacking this poor man. For one year they've attacked me and they will not stop. And this highlights the difference between the people who are on the side of the establishment and the people who are not on the side of the establishment. I've been offered to sell my soul very many times. I want everyone at home to understand, you do not become the most Googled man on earth, especially amongst a demographic of young men which have money to spend, without very large companies and corporations becoming extremely interested in you. I've been offered 50 to 60 million dollars by companies I'm not going to name. All I had to do was shut up. Shut up, take the money, wear the stupid hat wave around the stupid drink, whatever it is, and continue to agree with whatever the matrix says, regardless of my own personal feelings, my personal views and beliefs, and just push it on the minds of young children. And I refuse to do that. I refuse to sell my soul. If I would have sold my soul to a large corporation, and then this attack happened, which I very much doubt this level of matrix attack would have even happened to me, but if it did, then this large corporation would speak to the media and the media would be treating me like they treat Philip Schofield. Mm. They wouldn't be treating me as an enemy. They would treat me as an ally. All I had to do was sell my soul. And I refused. The recent BBC interview that took place, I don't think most people understand genuinely how snaky that interview was. The reason I had to destroy her so ruthlessly is because of how the interview was set up. When I was in jail, the BBC was constantly trying to get me to give an interview over the phone and I refused. When I left jail, the BBC begged me, begged me for an interview, daily begging me. And for three months, I refused. Eventually, once I understood after my third month of house arrest, what the Romanian government is gonna to do to me, which we're gonna discuss shortly, I thought, now would be a good time to get an interview. BBC begged me, saying that Romania has one of the most corrupt justice systems in Europe, that there's serious problems with the case, lots of evidence has been leaked shows Andrew's innocent, 
that Andrew's side of the story hasn't been heard, that we're interested in fair and unbiased journalism, that we don't want to come there and do a hit piece. We want to speak to him and try and find out the truth of what's happening. Mm. In fact, we're going to send you the questions we want to ask in advance. I'm not a coward. I never ask for questions in advance. I don't care because I'm a professional and I will destroy anyone instantly. But they sent us a list of questions, what? which was sent shown to me. And I was like, well, those are actually interesting questions. What's my mental health destroy like? Destroy anybody? What's in jail like? What's it like being in a courtroom where everyone's speaking a language you don't understand and having your liberty deprived of you? I thought, this is going to be an interesting interview. I agree. The BBC, all my smiles and all lies, sent us this entire spiel, turned up, turned the cameras on, sat down and attacked me. How wow. have you ever uh, put any and applied any psychological control on any of the women you dated? Or no, women? and I respect women. This idea that a man that I'm so much smarter that I can hypnotize somebody, I think is an extremely misogynistic idea. I think your idea is misogynistic to believe that women don't have their own free thoughts and free minds. Wow, powerful. They attempted to sucker punch me. They attempted to shake my hand and knock me out with a sucker punch once the cameras were on, to hit me when I was off guard. They expected me to be off guard, ready to talk about my mental health, and hit me with these questions and me make a fool of myself, unaware that I'm a master of Aikido. And when you attempt to sucker punch me, it simply misses, and I destroy you. I think we're done. Yep. Unmatched perspicacity. Just because I'm the best there's ever been, and me, with my quick thinking, and nearly <laughs> incomparable <laughs> wit, can sit and destroy a professional reporter and her entire research team's preparation, just because I make that look easy, doesn't mean I should be forced to succumb to these unfortunate circumstances. 99% of the population, if they were tricked the way I was tricked, would look a fool on camera. They were very prepared to try and make a fool of me. But I'm the best there's ever been. No, Did they no, do this sir. to Philip Schofield? No, no sir. No, Where was sir. the BBC's outrage when Rolf Harris or Jimmy Savile were touching children? They don't care. Where's the BBC's outrage when certain other people, high level in society, members of the royal family, are caught having pictures with minors. They don't care. But they will continue to try and convince you that I am something I am not on repeat over and over and over again. These people are worse than disingenuous. They are worse than simply liars. They are evil. They are a club. And if you sell your soul and join the club, they offer you protection. And if you don't, they aim to destroy you which is what they're trying to do to me. The reason I decided to give the interview to the BBC is because I now believe that the next step, and I'm gonna call it, because I've called everything that's happened to me so far. Look at my old interviews. I said, stage two, they're gonna try and put me in jail. I understand that you get three strikes in this game. Strike one is they try and shut you up and discredit you, which I've just been through. Strike two is they try and put you in jail for no reason. And strike three is they kill you. The truth is this. So I, I knew it was coming. I absolutely not knew it was coming because of how orchestrated it was. The only thing, and I'll state this at the beginning, the only reason I'm upset by being canceled is because I've expired one of my lives. I mean, I'd never kill myself. Don't fucking try. But, <laughs> bruv, because that's what's next. That's what's next. It's scary. I'm Come telling in. you, everyone thinks I'm paranoid. Everyone thinks I'm crazy. So it's like every single organization on the face of the planet is corrupt. This is why I say to people, I say, listen, and I'm going to say this on this podcast now because I say it on every other one. I would never, ever kill myself. I truly believe they're going to come and they're going to try and kill me on a long enough time frame. I believe that. And I won't shut up. They're either going to try and put me in jail or they're going to kill me. And I would never kill myself under any circumstances ever. And the reason I say this, and I say this to people, and they go, but what can they put you in jail for? And I'm like, how ignorant are you? They make stuff up. To believe they need a reason. You believe it's fair. You believe I can get a lawyer and prove myself innocent. That's not how it works. They decide you're guilty long before and they find a reason why. And it doesn't matter what you do about it, you will pay the fucking price. It's not fair. None of it is. Every single system's corrupt. It actually annoys me when people say it to me. Well, just get a lawyer. Why? They can't put you in jail if you're innocent. Yes, they fucking can. And that's what people don't understand about the world. They can and they do and they fucking will. And that's what's scary. I'm going to call what's going to happen next. The Matrix is extremely angry. And they are angry because their weapons aren't working. I remain unfazed. This is the first time in history someone who was canceled became more popular than before. This is the first time in history where a full broadside 
of media lies for over a year across every single outlet that they control has failed. Nobody believes them. Nobody. So now what do they do? Well, I believe the UK is going to try and raise charges against me. Don't know what for. I've done nothing wrong. Something's going to appear from nowhere. In fact, I will say that I have some very high level friends and some whistleblowers who are confirming exactly that to me. They've looked at me and thought, we have to get this guy. What's he done? Nothing. Find something. Find. Who cares? Get some papers, move some papers around, get a judge who'll stamp them and put him in jail. It doesn't matter that I've done nothing wrong. I also want to say that I believe the Romanian government is going to charge me. They're not going to charge me because they have any evidence. And they're not going to charge me because I'm guilty of anything. They're going to charge me because after a 14 month investigation, six months of arrest, which is the maximum they can possibly give me without charge, I don't think they can just drop this. Imagine they just drop this tomorrow. Oh, we made it all up. Imagine that. What choice do they have but to charge me? If they charge me, I have to go to trial. Now, of course, I still believe in Romanian justice. I really truly believe that in, even with Romanian justice systems or matrix control justice systems, I will be found innocent because I know the case file. I know what's in it. But that's going to take years. They're going to waste one to and a half to two years of my life, make me go to trial. Then when I'm found not guilty, it's been years. Who cares, right? Distance from event. If they drop it now, it's the biggest story in the world. They can't drop it. They're going to charge me. They're not going to charge me because I've done anything wrong. They're going to charge me because that's how the matrix works. Unfortunately, I'm up against an enemy which I can't really, truly beat. I can't beat them. All I can do is continue to discredit them to the point where nobody believes them anymore. And I cannot do that without having perspicacious, intelligent people at home who are analyzing the situation and truly understand what is happening to me. If I have to martyr myself, if I have to some degree sacrifice my liberty and the quality of my life to highlight how the matrix operates, how the legal system and the media work hand in hand to try and convince the populace somebody is guilty before a judge says they are guilty because they have pre-decided to say this person is guilty because of his wrong thing. If I have to sacrifice myself to do those things, then I guess at least my imprisonment is a noble one. And I'm a man. And although Romanian jail is as close to hell as you can find on planet Earth, if I have to suffer it, I will do that because I will not sell my soul. The point of this video is only to highlight and make clear the differences in how the people inside of the club are treated against versus the people who are outside of the club. And also for me to predict the future for everyone to understand when new charges come, when new countries attempt to attack me, when the matrix unrelentingly continues to print lies about me and try to convince the world that I am a bad person, I hope it does nothing else but show the world that I am a good person. These people are liars. The people they tell you are good are not good. The people they tell you are bad are the good ones. Do not believe a word that they say. All in all, my predictions for the future are not certain. My future is certainly not certain. Whether I'll continue to breathe or continue to be free, nobody knows. But the one thing I can guarantee to absolutely everybody at home and anybody who believes in me and my message and anybody who listens to me speak, I will never sell my soul, I will never be controlled, and I will never lie. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a lot to unpack. Let me just talk about a few points. First of all, a lot of the stuff he said I totally agree with. I think that he rose to a level of fame and uh, attention and notoriety. Same thing. Same things. I won't say he rose to a level of power because power is objective and subjective. None of us truly have power when we can't control our own heartbeat, right? For those of you that think if I get money, I'll be powerful, don't understand how the system works. I think he's right on the matrix and how they treat strong, masculine men that don't bow down versus men that do. I'll give you a prime example. But I'm going to tie this together 
with his statement that he's the best that's ever done it. He's a, the best witted, to paraphrase him, in interviews. Not true. Apparently, Andrew Tate needs to watch the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in interviews. Andrew Tate needs to watch Ted Nugent in interviews. Look at Farrakhan, Ted Nugent. Totally on the end of the different spectrums, but really the same. That's a whole video in itself. So maybe in his youth and his ignorance and his enthusiasm and his ego, he says this. Now, I believe and know and study and can prove that when men of this notoriety rise to a certain level of fame, the powers that be, they look at them as, let's use them for marketing. Let's use them for marketing. Let's use them for, 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 for our brand. And if they don't fall in line, it's easy ways to destroy a man. How do you destroy a man in today's world? You say he messed with children. You say he messed with women. You hit a man below the belt. And there, there's really no reason... Or we know that the proof doesn't have to be there. The charges itself can destroy you and diminish your character. I'll keep this short. That was a long video of Andrew Tate. I pray him innocence. I pray he is found not guilty. If these charges are truly uh, unfair, which I believe they are from my limited research. That's one thing he spoke about, being quick-witted, right? And the system to be... What are your thoughts? Leave your comments. This is The Spill with Spillman on the Foman at the Mouth podcast network. What are your thoughts? Leave a one in the comments if you feel that he is guilty. Leave a two if he's not. Three if you're undecided.